This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Awesome Chat is brought to you by Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. <laughs> Hey guys, it is the Awesome Chat, the show where we talk with awesome people in and around the Pittsburgh area, around technology and just doing awesome things. Uh, we, of course, you can check out everything at awesomecast.com and subscribe to the Awesome Channel, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and Google uh, Play Music, as well as the video versions on the Awesome Cast YouTube and Facebook page. And of course, Facebook is where we stream these interviews whenever they may come up. And of course, check out the main Awesome Cast every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Or I'm sorry. 7 p.m. Eastern. That's a different show. You don't want that show. Uh, but anyways. Nobody does. <laughs> well, the wrestling fans do. But anyways, in the meantime, you heard the voice already. Uh, our guest this week is uh, Jack Morgan, a designer over at Duolingo over there in uh, East, uh, East Liberty. The East End, I guess. Yes. As, as the cool kids are calling it these days, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, we, 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 we had an interesting connection. Yes, we did. Because uh, as I've talked about on the show, I do drive Lyft on the side here. Mm-hmm. And uh, you were one of my patrons one night. I was, yes. And I forget which day. I forget if it was in the day. I think it was. I think it was like midday or something. You were heading to the Permani Brothers I for was. some <laughs> kind of uh, like like company meetup or something. I was. I, know, I remember what it was. I was heading to the Permani's for... Um, I just left a friend's house. I think I was covered in paint at the time as well. Perhaps. I think, I think it was dark. The, yeah, exactly, it was probably dark. <laughs> yeah, the, the exact first... Um, the best first impression possible. I think it was actually working on my buddy's house at the time. Um, so I think I left covered in paint and uh, went straight to Vermanis <laughs> in search of sustenance and revival in the form of beer and wings. In, in either way, you know, I, I've always heard of a deal do a I've talked with uh, some people, you know, when when they've uh, sponsored events that I've done live mm-hmm. streaming at and everything, and I've always been interested about learning more. And uh, it was, you know, by chance that we kind of connected on this, so I yes. thought let's let's get you in and talk about what you guys are doing over there. Absolutely. Well, first of all, so you're a designer with Duolingo. Yes. What all does that kind of encompass for you? Uh, it's um. It's interesting. There are, when you work at a startup, you have to wear so many hats. Right. And, uh, Very I'm, familiar with that. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I can tell um, with all the different shows and everything that you guys are doing and, and, and the whole awesome setup that you have here. Um, you, you, you know what it's like to just be bouncing around uh, these, these different areas all the time. And, and you're, you're working on something different really every day. Um, my main focus at Duolingo right now has been uh, or is um, managing our visual design guidelines. So mm-hmm. that's the... Uh, design language that really um, encompasses all of Duolingo's products and informs the the user experience for Duolingo. Um, We've got about 200 million uh, users worldwide now, so uh, the tiniest of changes um, that really affects millions of people. So um, it's the kind of thing you have to look at from a systems perspective and mm-hmm. uh, from from a big picture perspective. And we come from um, we have a lot of uh, ex Google employees, so thank you Google, um, <laughs> myself included. Uh, so we we have a lot of Google's A B testing ethos at Duolingo, and every single thing, the tiniest thing. There's a famous thing at Google where um, they actually A B tested hundreds, I believe, of different shades of blue on the links on the search links to to figure out which one uh, mm-hmm. was the most effective. Uh, and, and Duolingo really carries that kind of ethos ethos forward. So uh, it's it's interesting doing um, going from your really big picture thinking about new products one day to the smallest of features the next day. And mm-hmm. they, they, it's a completely different frame of mind. Yeah. I want to roll back a second. Sure. I really should start with what is Duolingo? It, now it's a it's a it's basically a language learning mm-hmm. platform, right? It is. Duolingo is the um, is the world's most popular language learning app. Uh, Started about four or five years ago now. Um, really feels like feels like yesterday, and I wasn't I wasn't there in the early days, but I did download Duolingo from um, from the very beginning when it first launched, and uh, I've seen it grow, and um, I've been been able to work on that myself for the past few years. And uh, we really hit a milestone a few years ago when we actually overtook Rosetta Stone, there who we're often compared to, or who we used to be compared to. Uh, and at the time, um, say three, four years ago, Rosetta Stone was really the, the primary way that people, when they were looking to, to learn a language um, online and, and not in a classroom, that's where they went. Uh, and they, they often had to pay hundreds of dollars for these language courses. And uh, Duolingo was founded on the, the mission that um, 
the best quality education should be made available to everybody for free. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we've never changed that. 100% uh, of our content is free. You can you can go from the beginning to the end of a language course without paying us ever paying us a single cent. Uh, so and then and then the question, if you're thinking about businesses, so yes. how do you <laughs> make money? Yeah, the inevitable question. Yes. Yeah. Well, we uh, began in. A tr we began in, in the Silicon Valley um, startup sense of, of raising venture capital funding. Even mm -hmm. though we've never had a presence in Silicon Valley, we weren't founding in Silicon, founded in Silicon Valley. We were founded here in Pittsburgh. It's where our headquarters are. It's where the vast, vast majority of our staff are, other than a few remote employees. Um, and, and we began with this, this, this venture capital backing, and, and, and that's what carried us through these, those initial years. And, um, and uh, we still have um, great funding partners that, uh, that, that give us capital and help us keep pushing forward. But over the past year or so, we started focusing on uh, trying to make revenue for ourselves. So we do that in two ways. Um, one of those ways is in these completely optional in-app purchases. Just Duolingo is designed to feel like a game. You feel like you're playing a game while you're learning your language. So there are these optional in-app purchases. You can get fun outfits for Duo the Owl that's our mascot. Um, and you can pay for these little power-ups that make lessons more fun in different ways, but don't change the learning content. Uh, and we also show, we've begun showing recently um, ads at the end of lessons. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of showing them in the lesson and interrupting you or showing you before the lesson and gating you, we just show a, a short ad at the end once you're done doing your learning for the day and, and you move on. That's not bad. So something not, not you know, uh, really invasive or anything like that no. or, you know, annoying in the middle of the lesson that will distract you, right? Exactly. So, yes. all right, it's not bad. Yeah. And, and obviously doing very, very well for you guys. It's, uh, I know it's the one that's uh, mentioned a whole lot in conversations in this space. You mentioned you worked with uh, Google previously and everything. Yes. Were you working with Google like here in town? No, I was working with Google back in uh, England. So I was born okay. and raised in, uh, in London, in East London. Uh, and I began working for Google when I was about uh, 18. Okay. Um, as, as a design consultant for them and, and that eventually led to my work with Duolingo. So. Wait, you were a design consultant at 18? <laughs> yeah. oh, no, no, no. Yeah. no like, the, cons went... the consultant title makes it sound more fancy than it is. It, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, is that is this what you call interns over there? Or <laughs> So we, so I, yeah, so I, um, I'll take you back a little bit. I, so, I dropped out of high school when I was about 13 mm -hmm. and you can leave back when I dropped out of high school, you could leave high school. You could graduate at 16. That's when you usually graduated. Um, it's 18 here in the U S it's now 18 in the UK as well. They changed it to model the, the U S high school system. But up until then it was, it was 16. So I dropped out at 13 and then I spent the next, uh, three years. Um, when it, being in, being in high school, I was, um, I found, I didn't fit in very well with the, the default subjects that they wanted to teach. It didn't match up with my interests at the time. Yeah. And uh, I spent the next three years studying uh, graphic design just at home and on my computer sitting in the dark like a totally not weird person. Um, I'm sure like a person that, that ends up working at Google. I mean, that's Right, exactly, honest. exactly. The pure, <laughs> I have the pedigree for it, apparently. Yeah. Um, uh, teaching myself graphic design, philosophy, psychology, all the things I was interested in, just reading books and getting PDFs and whatever I could get my hands on. Mm -hmm. And then I... When I was 17, I joined uh, an ad agency called Havas in central London. Uh, I went and worked there for a number of years. And while I was working there, I found out about this project at Google that was based education-based. Um, and I did a bunch of unsolicited work. They didn't ask me to do anything. I just did a bunch of work that I thought, I didn't know if it was good or terrible or what. Found the person who was responsible for it, emailed it to them and kind of solicited them. And then they convinced, they eventually convinced them to hire me and then they, they, they hired me. So um, I was moonlighting for them for a few years. And then um, that's how uh, Duolingo found me. And that's how mm -hmm. I ended up coming over here. That's amazing. I, I, I want to talk about that transition over here uh, in a little bit. Yes. But so, so that's because there's this conversation happening of like whether people need to go to school for this stuff. Like it's right. a perfect example of as long as you put the work in. And get good at the thing. Right. I mean, you pretty much put in your thousand hours, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, the the whole time though, I was being told. I mean, I was being told you're 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 going to um, be flipping burgers for the rest of your for your <laughs> life because you don't you leave without. I did eventually graduate high school. I went back when I was sixteen for six nice. months and nice. did the did the tests, proved that I could read and write and do basic arithmetic. And, Probably uh, like what the equivalent of the GED here. I don't something. know what that is. I guess uh, uh, general. Is it? It's yeah. Again, you go back to a test, do the general the. 
So you got a diploma. Yeah, because they, yeah. they initially, yeah, exactly. They, they told me when I was younger that um, they said there's, there's absolutely no way you can graduate unless you do all of this, this coursework because you can't pass the test without doing the coursework first. And I said, okay, well, maybe we'll figure out another way. I was trying to like haggle with them as a, as a kid. <laughs> I, I didn't know what my plan was, but I thought maybe I could, maybe I could figure this out. Uh, and then, yeah, I did eventually go back and take those tests and it, apparently they're worth something. So <laughs> I don't Apparently, know. apparently. <laughs> Nobody's ever asked me for them, but apparently they're worth something. I, so. I feel the same way about my bachelor's so don't worry about it <laughs> uh that's awesome so so what kind of drove you through that you just was it just kind of a you found the graphic design and you went full on into it like Ooh. where what did you you know at that point where you're, you're not you're not getting a high school education you're being told you're flipping burgers yep. but you just put your head down in the graphic design yeah i well i grew up as a kid i was drawing all the time and i mm -hmm. i didn't know I knew that's. I knew I wanted to create things and 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 be some kind. I didn't know if I'd, I'd never thought of myself as an artist, but I knew I wanted to create things. Um, I loved when I was younger. I loved um, manga, specifically the manga books. Uh, and there was there was a bookstore nearby that you could you could actually rent them from. Sorry, it was actually a library. You could rent them from the library because they were really expensive to buy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I used to just draw manga characters all day long. So and and that's Jap basically Japanese comic books for those that exactly don't know. Yeah. yes Japanese comic books. Um, same, it's the you know the magazine version of uh, or the comic book version of um, anime, if you will. Anime, I think, is more widely known. Uh, and. I didn't know what I wanted to do with that, but I thought, I guessed, I thought I was going to grow up and be a cartoonist or something, and I was going to draw these things for a living. And then uh, at some point when I actually finally had my own computer, I was probably like, I don't know, 12 years old, uh, maybe 11, 12 years old. Um, I took that chance to, to, to sit in front of it as, uh, for as long as I could, and um, I was a bit of a night owl, so I'd stay up all night, and I, I can't remember how I discovered graphic design, but I discovered that there was this job that you could do where you could basically design anything, uh, and then I figured out that graphic design encompassed pretty much everything we look at, from the Sorgatron Media logo on the window, to um, mm -hmm. big ad campaigns, to brand identities for companies, to products, and um, yeah, I just couldn't stop myself from digging into that. That's awesome. So let's talk about that transition. You, you, of course, you landed here in Pittsburgh. Yes. Um, Duolingo found you via Google. Yes. Uh, how, you know, tell me about that. And and uh, <laughs> I mean, you, I mean, not just I landed in Pittsburgh. I landed in a different country yes. across the pond. Yes. <laughs> I came. So my, <laughs> I was when Duolingo first reached out to me. Um, I had all of the, we were a much smaller company then, we're about 100 people now, we were about 40 people then, I think. Mm -hmm. And the discussions that I'd had with Duolingo, it's more formalized now, but uh, they were just these, you know, Google Hangouts, you know, video <laughs> chat uh, meetings with the CEO, with the different designers that we had there. And they were such casual chats that I didn't, I wasn't really sure if I was being interviewed or not. I think it came up once or twice, but really I thought I was just talking to somebody um, for an hour or two. And then eventually they invited me out there and they, they sent me a, 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 an offer for employment and said, look, we're interested in uh, we're interested in hiring you. Do you want to come out and visit us? And I said, yeah, well, I'm definitely going to have to come out and visit you because at the time I didn't know what a Pittsburgh was. Um, <laughs> I thought I knew roughly where it was, but my geography is pretty terrible. And then I looked it up and I was like, oh, wow, it's the, it's the steel city. I've heard about this. I'd heard about it once or twice. Before. We're just curious because I also have a, I have a fuzzy understanding of the yes. middle of the, of the country myself and yes. finally visited Nebraska this past year. Okay. And, and it's not where I thought it was. Uh, right. What did you think <laughs> Pittsburgh was? <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I, I had no idea the first time I looked it up and I wasn't sure if it was like Midwest. I was guessing Midwest. Mm -hmm. um, when I tell people back home, when I go back home to visit people, they say to me, um, they go, oh, how's Phil Philadelphia? And I say, oh, Pittsburgh. <laughs> and they go, um, they're not sure if people back in, the, back in England aren't sure if um, Pittsburgh is in Philadelphia or if Pennsylvania is a state or a country. They're not quite sure really what's going on there. So I have to explain the sort of three Ps. No, Pittsburgh's in Pennsylvania next to Philadelphia. It's oh. near New York, yada, yada. Um, but yeah, the, f the first time I came here was to visit for a week. And our office at the time was in Shadyside. Mm -hmm. We had a small office in Shadyside. Um, on uh, Walnut Street and I got in late my flight was like terribly delayed I was on a United flight thankfully they weren't punching me in the face uh, at the time they did uh, they did they didn't do that back then um, that's probably libelous uh, but they like they they were late so I got in at like what is it like half past midnight probably 1 a.m mm -hmm. driving into my hotel in Shadyside and uh, I was in an Uber the first time I'd ever used an Uber was here in Pittsburgh actually um, Uber I don't think Lyft was here then and they drove me into Walnut Street and I had to go get food because I hadn't had dinner. So I left, checked into my hotel quickly and pretty much all I'd seen was the 
money shot of downtown when you come out of the, the mm -hmm. tunnel, which I thought was amazing. I didn't know I was going to see that, so that blew me away. And then I was shot straight into Walnut Street, which is sleepy and quiet and nothing's going on and nobody's on the street. And uh, I had to. Get, I just went out in search of food. I ended up going to the Giant Eagle and just buying whatever they had. There. I needed like toothpaste and stuff because I was meeting these 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 Duolingo people the next day. And uh, I was like, I, I did, hotels never have toothpaste, right? And I hadn't brought any because I, I was a moron. Um, so that was really my my first impression of Pittsburgh was Walnut Street at night, which was a, a weird one. I remember just walking around thinking, where the hell am I? At least um, you're in a decent neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice day. It's a really really nice neighborhood. Yeah, but um, it's not what I think of as as being. I, that that doesn't Walnut Street doesn't come into play when I think of Pittsburgh now. No, absolutely know. not. Absolutely not. No. Uh, so so was it you know uh, other than the job like did the yeah. did the town kind of uh, attract you after that visit? It really did. So I spent a week here uh, with everybody at Duolingo um, and. and and discovered the town and, and, and really liked it but it wasn't till I made this decision to move here I was going to bet on the people because I thought I'm sure the town is great and mm -hmm. I'll discover it and I know no, I'm an outsider right now so I know nothing about it and I, I, I I'm not in a position to judge it for better or worse so um, I'm going to make a bet on the people I'm going to make a bet on the company and I'll move my whole life over here and, and, and just see how it goes and I'll tell you, Mike, about two weeks after moving here, I met up with, or I, I made friends, sorry, with uh, a couple of the guys at Duolingo that are born and raised Pittsburghers that showed me the real town, what I hadn't seen, all the dive bars and all mm -hmm. the different neighborhoods and going downtown and shooting off somewhere else. You know, every 15 minutes you can be in another neighborhood because Pittsburgh's small enough. And uh, I really fell in love with it then. Um, and it, it's home now. It's, it's become a second home. So I'm really grateful for that. That's awesome. So I, I, love, I love being here. That's awesome. So, so you know, going through this, um, I, I like to. What what is the most surprising thing about working uh, in a startup in in in, in Pittsburgh? Mm. You know, it's especially at a company like Duolingo. It's the um, the level of responsibility you can instantly have if you want to create something, if you want to start your own project, if you're working on somebody mm -hmm. else's project, and the impact you can have from that is um, it's it's really empowering, and it's not something you get at bigger companies. I'm sure people do get it at Google, but you you and, or Microsoft, Facebook, you but you join those companies now, and you know they're they're, they're thirty thousand strong, hundred thousand strong, maybe companies. But you yeah. join a company of um, forty to hundred people, you're right next to the CEO. You know, Luis is our Luis Van Arn is our, our CEO. is an incredible man, and he sits you know twenty feet away from me. Uh, I've sat I spent months sitting next to him, and you can just reach out and, and, and ask him a question and get started. You know, you can put a five minute meeting in his calendar, fifteen minute meeting, and uh, talk about a project and, and get started the next day and it can be up and running um so it's that it really crystallizes for me the reason i got into design in the first place it's to to go from nothing to something or zero to one or a blank canvas to mm -hmm. just something whether or not it's a whether it's a product you think is going to be successful or not it's it's the it's the ability to just take that chance and, and and go out and make something and i mean you've done that with with all of this i mean when when you started um getting into the podcast game i mean how many podcasts do you have now uh, I have lost count. <laughs> exactly. There you go. So I mean, to go in the double digits, uh, any, any of them that we touch in a week, yeah. And life before that, and life after that is mm -hmm. is completely mm -hmm. different, right? Because you Absolutely. get up every day and you're your own, you're your own master. So mm -hmm. um, that's probably the biggest, the biggest shock you get because I, I don't know where else you get that. Yeah, and something like a Duolingo or what we do here, I think, is a, a product of kind of you know, what the internet and phones have done, right? Exactly. You know, that ability that kind of uh, takes the leash off. Yes. You know, the, what a, even a nine, nine to five could be, right? Yes, So exactly. And I mean, you, you, you being here in Pittsburgh, you asked about Pittsburgh. I mean, you, the, the, the startups that are coming out of Pittsburgh now are um, they're, you know, really interesting startups like Gridwise, for example. I think mm -hmm. you met the guys, a couple of the guys oh, at yeah. Gridwise. Oh, yeah. Um, I've been, I'm fortunate enough to speak to them as well. And um, They were there just... A young company in Alpha Lab yes. at the time, and and I still use their app as I'm out on Lyft. That's awesome. So. Yeah, I mean that's it. I mean I can run into a guy like you in a in a Lyft, and you know, people are always quite humble about these things. I mean I I met into I, I was in an Uber ride just like two days ago, going to work uh, from my girlfriend's apartment, and I noticed I accidentally tapped on. I got an Uber. It was the fa fastest you know pickup was was an Uber. I jumped in that. Tapped on the guy's profile accidentally because I was trying to see what his car was, mm -hmm. and it said, uh, "I'm a woodworker." Underneath what he does, and I thought oh, I'll just ask him about that. A friend of mine's a woodworker, and it's yeah. really interesting. I know nothing about it. Uh, just working purely with your hands, and uh, so I asked him about it, and he said he makes canes. 
And I'm expecting, uh, you know, he was. I, t I told him, do you have like, a, you know, a garage that you do this in, or do you, you know, how do you do it? Do you have a workbench? He said, no, I just do it while watching television. I just sit in front of TV with a, this little tiny blade knife and just whittle away these these canes. He pulls up at my my office and I said, would you could do you have any pictures or anything you can show me? And he says, I have a few in the trunk I can show you. He jumps out, opens the trunk, and these things were like masterpieces man it's un uh, absolutely unbelievable they were multicolored. they were made of some of them one one was like a giant um staff that had a demon's head on it with horns coming out and it had a it had like a glass brain that he had had blown at the glass factory down on on penn avenue nice. uh and it, one that he was making had his father's face carved in it and these were the most detailed beautiful pieces of art and this was just a guy just driving a car just does it on his on, on his personal time uh, so being able, being in somewhere like Pittsburgh, you can you can meet somebody like that, and it, it's um, it just doesn't happen anywhere else. You, it, it, cities like London and New York are fantastic, and I love them, and I love being there. But you don't get to connect with people like you do here in Pittsburgh. And it's I think a different speed. It is a different speed, and we get to catch up with each other here. I think. Yeah, it's deeper. I would say yeah. it's deeper. Awesome. Any advice for anybody that wants to get into, uh, you know, say kind of uh, you know thinking back to where you were, kind of figuring out what you wanted to do. Um, after school, like uh, that, wants to get into a creative field like this. Mm. I would say, and this is probably biased by my own background, but um, I would say, don't worry about the formalities too much. Don't worry about the if you're a if you're a designer and you want to create something, you want to build a product, you want to you're an artist, you want to paint, um, paint, do the art, find a find a company that you're interested in. It could be it doesn't have to be a Google or a Facebook. It could be a small company. Mm -hmm. um, it could be your own company. It could be something something you want to start. Make something. Um, you can use Squarespace to to create a beautiful case study if you want to make a long web page with all different uh, images on it, explaining explaining your thought process and uh, and, and open up and, and and put it together and, and just start sending it out to people and, and kind of risk the um, you know uh, what would you say risk the rejection. You know, if you find a company you're interested in, make something for them, send it to them, say, would you like this? Um, I don't expect anything in return. I just wanted to make this for you and, uh, and see what might come out of it. Because if you show up at the door with value to give to somebody, they're, they're, oftentimes they're inclined to take it and that could, that could lead somewhere. So Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, Duolingo.com if you want to check out. Of course, he's a piece of that. Uh, is there anything uh, it, that people can check out of uh, your own personal work or people can get a hold of you online? Yeah, sure. You go to jackmorgan.com. That's the easiest one. Um, send me an email. It's just email at jackmorgan.com. So uh, Twitter is uh, at jckmgn. It's a shortened version of my name. Somebody else took it. Uh, so we <laughs> had to get a, creative. Yeah, yeah, we had to get creative. Exactly. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us. It's been Thanks great, great talking with you and uh, a surprising backstory. I love this. Thank you. Uh, so and of course, please also check out the awesome cast. Uh, Jack's going to join us for a recording there, or have already if you're checking this out later on the podcast stream or wherever else you do find the awesome chat. Uh, uh, let us know anybody in the uh, Pittsburgh area that you think that we should be talking with on here that's doing some awesome things uh, over at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com or awesomecast on the Twitter, Facebook, and of course, an awesome cast because somebody else got that there <laughs> over on YouTube. Uh, thank yeah. you so much uh, to our uh, awesome guest. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.